Hey everybody, welcome to Visual Effects Artists React. We have some great clips today. In fact, we have a sweet clip that is a small soldier's reboot. It looks so good. This is Unreal Engine? No way. <laughs> I know, I love it. I love revealing that. Also, I've been dying to get Star Trek on this series for a long time, and I think I have the perfect clip to kick it off. We're also gonna be looking at The Human Torch from the original Fantastic Four movie that came out in 2005, starring Chris Evans. I don't think the CGI aged very well. They definitely have a challenge of trying to have like a human that can emote inside this fire. And finally, I'm going to test some CGI. To see if it makes Ren feel something, because I'm gonna show Ren his greatest fear. You guys remember that movie, Small Soldiers? Yeah. I, I was like, I forgot about Small Soldiers. I was like, yeah. The, I've been wanting to cover that on the show. It's gritty yeah. Toy Story. Did you see this like cool reboot proof of concept that came out? No. no. Wait, what? It's it's really cool. Here, just just start playing it. Just play. Just look at this. It's sweet. War for the Necron. This is all Blender. Wait, is this a render? Bro, this is. Freaking Unreal Engine. <laughs> Unreal really? Engine? No way. <laughs> I know, I love it. I love revealing that. Like the plastic shader is perfect. Yeah, it looks so this good. This is Unreal Engine? No way. So, look, I hate to be the Unreal guy, which I obviously am, but <laughs> Unreal has path tracing in it, guys. I like, mean, okay. You can do a real render, like a real <laughs> render using Unreal now. But and, then and like, they, in the name, they said you can't. But in Unreal, <laughs> it's Unreal. But that's the whole thing with all these new updates that came out. They got, you know, the Nanite stuff, the, the Lumen stuff, that's cool. But now in like 5.2, they found a way to unify most of the rendering systems to work with path tracing. So just to clarify, path tracing is basically how modern renderers work, where they simulate the light bouncing around the room, the way it takes on color, bounces off surfaces, etc., illuminates the space. And if you look at old rendering, it's a single light, harsh shadows, no soft shadows anywhere, no bounce light. You get to modern day rendering, you have all this bounce light, this global illumination, different kind of surface materials, refraction, reflections, all this great stuff. But video games don't really have any of that because they're trying to do all this real time stuff and Unreal Engine is like, whatever, we'll just also add that to our incredible engine here. So the path tracing in Unreal Engine is not real time. No. Not how how unreal time is it? It's like, it's, <laughs> no, no, it's like anything else. It's, like what? Like what? You twenty seconds per frame, a minute per frame, like whatever you okay. want. It's it's just like anything else. So this probably still took a while to render. Oh, this looks heck incredible. Yeah. This took a long ass time to render. I have more technical questions, but wow. we're still like. Look at this. <laughs> reacting here. <laughs> I like that touch. Whenever she's firing at this alien, that little BB hits the door and leaves a little impression, a little circular yeah. impression there, like it actually would if you're to shoot something with a BB. <laughs> yeah, you see that? Yeah. Man, this looks really nice. It's animated really well. I know, the animation's Dude, incredible. The reveal to this army of monster toys. Yeah. Like his wings spread out and then the wings turn into little sub minions. Their own little characters, yeah. <laughs> How would you describe this animation? It looks toy-like? looks physical. It looks like when you wiggle your action figures. <laughs> you take an action figure and shake it. It's like, you know. Do they even got little hairs on them? Yeah, it's Did you see fun. the little hair on that? It's like a little fuzz. That's like one of those little details you add to a render to actually like kind of ground it in reality. Like all the dust particles on the actual surface of the plastic is an intentional addition. Man, these box physics, like when the box flaps waver and stuff, it's like such a small touch. That's really impressive. Sweet. So I think it's important to note that although this is Unreal Engine, a lot of that stuff was probably made outside of Unreal. Oh like, yeah, totally. Like the, the plastic shroud of the packaging getting ripped open and whatnot. It is deceptive, you're right, because like a lot of these animations are created outside of the program. Yeah, I mean some of that can definitely be done in Unreal just fine, but it's definitely a blend. This is clearly created by a team of really talented artists. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. It's a sweet little, sweet little piece. Cool toys. That's super cool. <laughs> we'll do a real Small Soldiers movie look in another episode. It's like one of those films that like deserves research. Is that the new Small Soldiers trailer? Yeah, those toys are jacked. Come here, come here. Okay, like not everyone can be injection molded into the perfect body like those toys, but you know, humans actually have to work for it. Which brings me to today's sponsor, Copilot, which is the perfect tool to get you to your fitness goals. Come on. So, 
I'm like really into fitness and I take it super seriously. I personally love Copilot because there is a real life person on the other end of my cell phone that I can constantly talk to. So when I was using an in-person personal trainer, I had to set my workout schedule to the times that worked for them. But now with this Copilot app, I can work out at 2 a.m. if I wanted to. They're still gonna see that I worked out. They'll still be able to see everything that I did and what I accomplished. At the end of every workout when you submit it, you can see where your heart rate was up or down, what reps you did the best, if you hit a new streak. You can see what body muscles you have targeted during that workout. Copilot has personalized workout programs made by experts. And over 75% of Copilot clients continue to work out after 100 days, which means Copilot clients are nine times more successful at sticking to their goals. Okay, look, you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Click that Copilot link below or use the QR code on the screen to get 14 days free with your own expert fitness health coach. Okay, I won't take up any more of your time. Let's get back to React. I wonder what they're gonna look at next. Ah! The Warg, set a course for Earth. Maximum Warg. I've been trying to figure out a way to start the conversation about Star Trek on this show. I know. So I think I may have found the clip that is the best conversation starter for Star Trek. Like when I think about Star Trek and I think about like most memorable moments, it's, it's up there, like top five for me. Is this the shot I think it is? It might be, it's the one from First Contact. I... Let's just watch it. The Borg have a collective consciousness. There are no individuals. When I saw this, I, I saw this in the theater with my mom. It is the shot. Oh man. I am the beginning, the end, the one who is many. This is pretty cool. It's gotta be a puppet. Do you know the shot? No, maybe it's not a puppet. Oh man, this is incredible right here. Wow. Hold on. <laughs> right? Well done, Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, it might honestly be all downhill from here as far as like cool VFX shots, because I think this might be the coolest one in all of Star Trek history. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but here's the thing. It, not only is it a cool shot from a concept standpoint, but for the time as well, it's insanely impressive. Do you know who did the shot? You know. The guys, it's like one of the four main famous guys. <laughs> <laughs> so does ILM. Okay, yeah. Yeah, John, John, John Noll, obviously, see, I told you, he's one of the guys. <laughs> 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 so, do you guys remember when we were looking at the shots of the hand from Adam's family? That was yes. Nice. But you know how you do that? You have a hand with a prosthetic stump, and then it's a green or blue arm. Yeah. So it's kind of what's happening here for the head and torso. That's her real head, uh -huh. and that's a prosthetic torso, and her body is actually in a blue morph suit that's kind of hanging off prone. She's being lowered down by a mechanically controlled motion control arm. The camera is motion control as well, which basically allows this prosthetic torso to effectively line up to exactly where she's gonna be standing. So she's standing there in the end of the shot in the same pose that she's being lowered down into. And then they're using a little bit of a morph after her like torso gets sealed in to transition to the next performance. So there's two shots happening here. So the shot of her head there lowering down, and then in a moment from here when she's now walking away, those are two separate shots. There's definitely one morph happening. You can tell on the bottom of the torso. Yeah. You have the liquefy effect on her costume going over her shoulders, and then a morph happening as it pulls her skin down. The animation of the suit like clasping to her skin is solid. Like it's really well done. It's cool. cool. This is super cool. I love this. It is a really cool I effect. think you're right, Sam. This is probably the most iconic Star Trek shot. This is also Star Trek effects in a nutshell. A very slow, two characters talking to each other, singular thing. And it's like, ta-da. Theater. <laughs> you know? I love Star Trek. So fine art. You know art's good because it makes you feel something. You don't have to be like a trained art historian, right? You know a movie's good, it just makes you feel something. You don't have to be a movie critic. So how do you know if CGI is good? How do you know if effects are good? The way it makes you feel? It's just the way you make, it makes you feel. So <laughs> in this next clip, let's just watch Ren and let's see how it oh makes boy. him feel. And we'll be able to tell if the CGI is good or not. Wait, should I watch Ren or this, the clip? We can watch the clip. Okay. <laughs> but you guys, you guys watch get Ren. to watch Ren. Check out Brett. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> we gotta get out of here, they're coming! Looks like the only thing going is you, dude. <laughs> oh, 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 holy shit. <laughs> Red doesn't look scared Yeah, I guess the CG hasn't aged as well, because Ren's just like, whatever. Nico, we still haven't talked about what if the CGI makes you feel nothing? <laughs> they, are they are using the same animation over and over again. They're all just like jumping. 
Oh, that dust though. Yeah, there's actually some really nice shots in this. But that dust shot was pretty. There's nice. also some shots that have aged. Well, I think just the rendering of the spider. You can tell that they're CG spiders, and I'm not exactly sure why right now <laughs> off the top of my head. It's animation all the way. There's some janky animation and some nice animation. I mean, it's a hard thing. It's like when you have to animate, I don't know, 100 spiders, some of them are gonna get some really nice attention and some of them aren't gonna get as much attention. Like, like this part coming up, I think, has very nice animation. Man, watch it! Uh, yeah, no, this looks like good. Like the, the way the one slides and like bumps the other one. That shot is good. Yeah. The shape of this spider doesn't trigger my fear response at all. Like big body, short legs, they don't do it for me. Shiny legs that are long, that, that freaks me out. Ah! 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 Yikes. There it is. <laughs> there we go, that's the, that's the feeling. Those ones, no thank you. Those striped legs, yep. They're shiny. This scene right here is it's really satisfying. Like this is this is a nice scene coming up. It's a nice wholesome scene. <laughs> oh. But Ren, this part's for you. <laughs> the freaking juice. They're full of green They're goo. full of lime juice. They're highly pressurized spiders. Ren is just starting to squirm here, and if you want to actually see us continue to make him squirm, head over to CordoDigital.com for the extended version of this react. He's heating up from his core. You don't want to walk around on fire for the rest of your life, do you? Is that a trick question? So, Fantastic Four, starring Captain America himself as the Human Torch. I kind of found the effects to be rather impressive, so I kind of wanted to get your guys' thoughts on it. I got an idea. Don't even think about it. Never do. What are you doing? Torch out. What did it say? Flame on. Flame yeah. on. <laughs> Torch out. <laughs> Dude, it's windy, so he needs to cup their hands around him. Why is... Oh, it's because he's really hot, so that's why the missile's going after him. He's hot even before yeah. he's fiery. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think the CGI aged very well. The way you felt about the spiders the first time you saw them is how I feel about this fire. They definitely have a challenge of trying to have like a human that can emote inside this fire. Ren, why did you pick this clip? Because there's a lot going on behind the scenes here. A lot of these shots were fully CG. Some of the shots were like day for night shots, like where they actually filmed in the middle of the day in the city for like the cars and whatnot, and used the intense daytime as part of the illumination pass. But also, you know, this came out in 2005, so working on this 2004, 2005-ish, there weren't really like fire simulation tools back then. And the tools that did exist were very, very rudimentary. And it is a bunch of different passes of a bunch of different scales of actually simulated fire, mm. all comped onto actual footage of Chris Evans here. Wait, it's actual Chris Evans? Yeah. So they filmed one pass of him just like laying down on like a surfboard type thing. And then they would match move a 3D model of him and use that to basically generate a bunch of the, the fire that's being simulated around him. That was good, actually. Yeah, this looks nice. pretty good. They you can see some right of the here. stepping in the simulation where it's like kind of skipping voxels a little bit. You kind of see like the, the horizontal lines. But they were able to get rid of that using motion blur. So they would do an actual pass for the vectors of it and then combine those together to actually get like the nice like smeary fire. Motion blur goes a long way. You can kind of see the different passes that are being added on top of him because you can't really simulate all this stuff at the same time. You have to do it in pieces and just combine it. Man, the color was so good in the test, but like the hyper orange saturation, that's like, that's a struggle with CG fire, especially back then when like the full dynamic range isn't fully worked out. Well, it's because you <laughs> lose that contrast. It looks yeah. really good against the black background there. You can really see the detail of the simulation, but then when you just put the same color behind the fire, it makes it harder to see that detail. And then the final compositing pass kind of blows out the exposure on a lot of it. So you additionally lose more of that. I'm, uh, I'm really curious to see what the Human Torch looks like in the ill-fated Fantastic Four movie that came out in like 2009, 2010. 2015. Oh, hey, look, look, he's dark, he's dark. They made him dark. They Yeah, they basically just gave him super white eyes and a white mouth. So it stands out from that dark background. I think this looks a lot better with the darker core. Yeah, it totally does. I think they had that realization of like, we got to see the flames better. But now you just have the problem of like, okay, so I want you guys to CGI in a really bright light. It's like, okay, what should we do for the background photography? Just set up the camera and get a dolly shot. It's like, ugh, that should be so much brighter in that room. Yeah. So much brighter. Yeah. The simulation looks better in the yeah, newer for sure. Fantastic Four, but it's always weird to me like how these things just 
don't get done on films where it's like everybody knows how bright fire is. Like you can go and you can make a campfire, but like they still yeah. underlit the room. It's like there's a whole bonfire in front of this dude, and there's no <laughs> light reflecting off of his head. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah. yeah, they could have taken that highlight there and just tinted that a different color. It's like, color. sir, what was, what's this play going to be used for? It's like, is this where the, he's working with the Human Torch? <laughs> Here, let's light him with the blue like, light. What, what's he, it's like, isn't the Human Torch supposed to be there? It's like, yeah, is he going to be, like, uh, hot? <laughs> it's like, nah, this is one of the cold scenes. <laughs> it's funny, though, like, each film has, like, their own strength, where, like, the comping of the earlier Fantastic Four movies is really, really good. Yeah, and I feel I like it handles the brightness of the fire. Like, you see how much care they put into lighting the scenes and doing all the lens work to make it feel like it's there. Whereas this, the design of the character actually looks a little less goofy. And the and, simulation looks great. And the simulation looks great. You get the character, the shape, and the form, except then they're not like placing it and comping it properly. Or just like filming the scene with enough direction just, to it, like... It, yeah, it just doesn't feel like it has that extra edge. I think it's like, that's the thing. It's like, how do you do it justice? Isn't like fire like one of the most critiqued things? Yeah. Maybe <laughs> like on this show? It's like, all right, well now here's a character that is fire. Oh, did you know that five of us here at Corridor are on the co-pilot program? So just a reminder, click that link in the description below or scan that QR code to get 14 free days with your own personal trainer. Thanks again for Copilot for sponsoring this video. This was an amazingly fun episode. Despite the clip that you wanted to show me, I didn't, I couldn't look at some of that, honestly. But yeah, thank you for watching and we'll be here next week. Subscribe so that you see what we got coming.